Hello and good evening. Welcome to Tale Tuesday Evening Live Christian Talk with the Sisters. It is another fabulous Tuesday evening and I am glad to be here on this day rejoicing in the Lord and thanking him for allowing not only me but all of us to be able to come together to fellowship and virtual fellowship on Tale this evening. Today has been another hot day but a beautiful day and a new day that we had not yet experienced that wasn't promised to us. And so it's a great day to be excited and to be joyful because our time could have been different and we probably wouldn't have seen this day, but God saw fit to bless us with seeing it. So I'm just super thankful and grateful that we are all here together tonight on Tail. So I want to welcome you on behalf of our entire church family and our pastor, Pastor Tim Grace Sr. and our First Lady, Lady Yinka Grace, we all worship at Pleasant View Missionary Baptist Church located at 700 South Haley Street in Bakersfield, California in the beautiful, beautiful state of California. And it is an awesome opportunity to be able to always come together and fellowship in God's house. So I just want to just welcome you all and thank you for joining us. And I'm super excited for what God has in store for us tonight. And I pray that you too are ready and that you are having a great expectation in your heart that you know that God is going to have something for you tonight. So this evening, before we even get started, I am going to ask you, if you will, please take just a few moments and go ahead and like this broadcast, whether you're joining us from Facebook or YouTube, go ahead and push that like button, tag as many people as you can and share it. Let's get as many of our friends, our family members, people we might even know that we're just neutral Facebook friends with just because we want to have those network connections, go ahead and get them connected to tell tonight and share tonight's broadcast with them so that they too can be connected to us virtually. And we thank you a million times over for sharing tonight's broadcast with everyone that you can. So this evening, go ahead and get your Bibles together, get your notepads out and your pens, because we are going to be diving into Proverbs chapter 28. We are getting through our Proverbs series and we are nearing the end, but we're not at the end yet. And so tonight we are going to be diving into more words of wisdom from our God through 
the writer Solomon. And so it's going to be an evening where we're going to be tremendously blessed as we pick out just a few verses to discuss. But I do encourage you to read the whole chapter. If you haven't done so already, take some time this week and go ahead and read through it because it's very rich and it has a lot of great words of wisdom, instructions, assemblies, and things that will really capture and uh, capture your mind and capture you to give you a better understanding of how God wants us to walk in his wisdom. So get your Bibles out, whether you have them in hard copy form or electronic form, and we're going to go ahead and get into our discussion of the evening. But we have to do some important things before we do so. First, we need to go to our Father in a word of prayer. And then right thereafter, I will be introducing to you and presenting to others my two beautiful sister friends, women of Christ, lovely women, uh, that will be joining me again tonight on Tale to get into our discussion of the evening. But first, let's go ahead and let's pray, if you will, wherever you are. And if you're able to, go, if you will bow your heads with me and let's pray to our Father in heaven in a word of prayer. So let us pray. Most gracious Father, our Lord in heaven, oh God, we come to you, Father, right now. Lord, we come to you, God, in this moment, in this time, in prayer, Lord. First of all, God, to just honor you and lift you up, God. Lord, we want to magnify you. Lord, we exalt you, Lord. Lord, we put you on high. We worship you with the fruit of our lips, Father, and we glorify you, Lord. And we want you to know, Father, that we honor you not only for the things that you do and the things that you have done, but God, we honor you and we worship you and we glorify you for who you are. Lord, you are our Lord. You, God, are our God. Lord, we know that you are holy. We know that you're righteous. We know that you're faithful. We know that you're a way maker. We know, God, that you can be all things in every situation for every person, for everything, because you're everywhere, God. You are sovereign. God, you are most high. Lord, and we just lift you up, God. We know that you are the same God of Abraham, Father. We know that you are the same God of Isaac and Jacob, those that were given the promise, Father God, Lord. And we know, God, that you have to given us promises to stand on, Lord. And we just want to bless you and thank you, God, because you are the great I am who is victorious in all ways and in all things. And Lord, we just want to tell you, thank you, Lord, for blessing us to have this platform to be able to come together on Facebook and YouTube for where we all are across the world. We thank you, Lord, for just making this uh, tool that we're able to use. And we just thank you for giving us the opportunity, Lord, to bless your wonderful name and to also be able to bless one another through our speaking of your word, our sharing of your word, and through our testimonies, Father God, Lord. Lord, I pray for each and every person that will be on tonight, Lord. I pray for each and every person that will be speaking, Sister Rhonda, Sister Lenora, and myself, Lord. Lord, and I just thank you, God, for just giving us a revelation of Proverbs chapter 28. So, Lord, we can have the rich wisdom that you want us to have, Lord. And so as as we can to discuss the verses, Lord, as you've done week over week, Lord, we ask for a fresh revelation tonight, Lord. Touch us, God, from the top of our heads to the bottom of our feet, Lord. Give us, God, everything that we desire, God. We know that, Lord, you are one who rewards those who, reward those who diligently seek you, God. And tonight we seek your face, Lord. We love you, God, and we thank you. Lord, we also love your son, Jesus we thank you, God, for giving your only begotten son for us, God, that you loved us so much that we who all believe shall not perish but have everlasting life, Lord. And so, God, we ask you right now to forgive us of our sins, Lord. We ask you, God, not only just the sins of us in this live stream right now, but those of all, all over the world, all mankind, Lord. And we just thank you, God, for being the gracious, merciful, and forgiving God that you are. Lord, we pray, God, for those that don't know you, God, that tonight that they come to know who you are, Father, that they say yes to your will and no to their will, Father. Lord, we just pray, God, that many people will be touched through this broadcast tonight, Lord. Lord, we pray for those that are sick and shut in and those that are traveling. God, we ask that you be in every situation, touch each and every person. You know, and we know that you can do all things because you are able. 
Lord, we forever give you the honor. We forever give you the glory. We forever give you the praise. And we tell you, thank you, God right now in the name of Jesus for listening to us, for hearing us, God, and for blessing us in everything according to your will and your way. In the precious name of Jesus, we ask and pray all these things. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen and amen. So now I'm going to introduce to you none other than my two beautiful sisters, as I just shared with you, that are going to be speaking tonight. So if you will, Take just a few moments if you can and put some hand claps or some hand emojis in the comments and welcome my two beautiful sisters, none other than Sister Rhonda Darensburg and Sister Lenora McClellan. So if you would just give them a hand clap and some uh, bless you, my sisters, and whatever else you would like to share in the comments. Good evening, <laughs> ladies. Hello. I was almost out, with the prayer. I was almost out of here. I was like, uh, <laughs> "Y'all was gonna see a y'all was gonna see a blank screen because I'd have been on my knees." Yes, thank you, Lord. I'm like, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad we're here together tonight on another Tuesday evening, and it's a yes. awesome, awesome, awesome discussion that I know we're going to have, and I'm looking forward to it. And Sister Rhonda, we're glad to have you back this week because we most definitely missed you last week. So oh, we're yeah. glad that you were back. It's like it's the trio. So. Oh, yes. three tears. yes, yes, and we had a rich conversation last week, Sister Lenora. She laid it down with all the verses and stuff. So I had all my notes. Nuggets, as I like to call them, and I uh, just thanks to Lenora for just sharing so much last week. So definitely, yeah. definitely helped me. So God was amazing. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, I'm looking forward to tonight. So before we get started, I just want to acknowledge some of our sisters who have posted in the comments, just so you all. Um, can hear for those that might not be watching visually and maybe listening. So we have Sister Lisa Carr, who is on Lisa. with us tonight. So hi, Sister Lisa. Lisa. We have hi. Sister Janetta. So all the way from out of state. <laughs> right, right. So Faithful. We have her with us. We have joining us also Sister Florence Douglas. Sister hi, Lisa. hi. Good evening, my sister. And she put some hand emojis too for y'all. And us. <laughs> that's who I said. That's me. Me. That's me. Like <laughs> so we appreciate you, ladies, for joining us. Uh, oh, we also have Sandy Ballard, Sister Sandy Ballard. Hi, and welcome. Hi. And welcome. <laughs> So I'm sure we probably have some others who have not posted in the comments, but I just want to acknowledge those that have done so thus far. And we're just going to go ahead and get started. And so for those that are joining us live, we just want to encourage you to go ahead and share in the comments. And I will post them and I will try to read them as we go through. And um, we just yeah. have Alana Nunn join on. So she says, hey, y'all. Hi. <laughs> so we are going to... Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So the question of the evening is the same question that we had discussed last week, but it's just going to be applicable to Proverbs 28. And so I asked uh, the ladies to take a look at Proverbs 28 and to choose one Bible verse from the chapter and share how the verse can help us. Or if we want to make it personal, um, you can answer from a personal level and how it will help you. And basically how the verse will help us to fit into God's plan versus coming up with our own plan. And so that's what we're going to be talking about as we each pick the Bible first uh, through Proverbs chapter 28. So this evening, we're going to start with Sister Lenora, and she's going to be sharing the Bible verse that she chose. And we will get started with that discussion. So Sister Lenora, take it away. Yes. Okay. So this verse will help us all, but I'm going to say this, I'm starting with the woman in the mirror. <laughs> so, so it has spoke to me. And of course he gave me that song and I'm going to tell you where he tied it in. So I started with, um, I chose Proverbs 28 and 13 and the message, I'm going to do the King James version first. It says, he that covers his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesses and forsake it, them shall have mercy. 
And the message Bible says, you can't whitewash your sins and get by with it. You find mercy by admitting and leaving them. Mm -hmm. So those are the two verses that, well, two different uh, verses uh, in the message in the King, King James Version. Psalms 32 and 34, of course, when I start talking on and looking up research on sins and how we can't hide them, David came up again. So Psalms 32, three and four talks about while David covered his sins, he was still bothered by them. When you get to a place where you sin and you're not bothered and by, not conflicted by it, then we need to take a look at ourselves again. I know that when I do something wrong, it hurts me to my core because I know I've done this to God and God alone. You know, it, it, I'm like, why am I still failing in this area? But there's also areas I triumph in. But those areas are in the areas where I told God, I know who I am and I know what I did. So this speaks about telling, uh, confessing our faults to God. Mm. Uh, David in Psalms 32, three to four said, when I kept silent about my sins, my bone waxed, my bones waxed old through my roaring all day long for day and night. They, your hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. Say la. So he said when he kept quiet, it, it put something on him. When we keep quiet about the things we're doing, it wears on us. It may age us. It, physical difficulties, uh, there's consequences. It's a lot of things that when we sin, it's not hidden from God, neither is the consequence taken away from us. Uh, number five of uh, Psalms 32, three through four uh, and five, it says, I acknowledge my sin unto thee and mine iniquities. Have I hid not? I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin, Selah. So there's a verse where he said he hid it and it just, it, it kind of like aged him, made him distressed. And then in five, he's saying, I acknowledged them and you forgave me. And that's pretty much what God wants us to do, acknowledge our sins. And then uh, my, some of this is my opinion, but I'll tell you when it's opinion so you won't think it's scripture. So I put, if we conceal our wounds, how can they be healed? tell the Lord all about our issues. And then he brought up the woman with the issue of blood. So even though that, I'm, I'm just going to tell you how it ties in. I picked the one from Mark 5, 27 through 25. The woman with an issue of blood no longer hid in the shadows of, hid in the shadows, but she sought Jesus openly for her healing. So we, we hide our sins just like we hide our pain. And so I put, just like with our wounds, if we repent of our sins, Jesus will meet us right where we are. And then we can be healed. We can be forgiven. But the longer we hide and we don't acknowledge that we're in pain or that we're sinners or whatever it is, he wants us to speak it to him and ask for forgiveness. That's not good. think, not pretend like we have it all together. And that's just to be people pleasers. God wants us to be God pleasers, to please him. Um, First John 1 and 9 says, when we set our sins before our face, God casts it behind his back. So, and that it ties in like uh, David said, his sins were ever before his face. So if he was ever acknowledging, ever knowing that he sinned, but once we repent, God casts it behind his back. Like it's not something that is going to beat you up all the days of your life once you repent of it. But repent means say I did it and turn away from it. Not say I did it and I'm a plan on doing it again. Repent is meaning I acknowledge I've done it and I'm going to turn away from the sin with the help of the Lord. So first John one and nine, and then I put Jeremiah. I have all my first John one and nine says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But that confession, he needs to come from us. We know God is an all knowing God, but he wants us to come to the end of ourselves and say, I know I did this and I'm asking for forgiveness. And not just assume he's going to forgive us without us asking. <laughs> and it says, David said, my sin is ever before me, which was Psalms 51, 3 through 14. He says, this is where he acknowledges his sin. And he's asking God to have mercy. He says, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. And see, that ties in with the 
uh, verse I just said that when we confess, when we don't confess, we're always knowing that we sin. When we confess, God cast it behind our back. So it's not something that Satan can be the accusers of the brethren once we confess our sins. Because God already knows. Satan tries to use it when we don't confess it. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what so-and-so did? You know you did this the other day and you haven't even told God about it. You know, and it makes us feel, those who are following the God, following God, we have, we feel kind of guilty and we feel remorse. Those who don't care don't feel no remorse and they'll continue to sin. And that takes me to my next scripture where it says the wages of sin is death. So it was just so much. I was like, let me, let me just get it <laughs> to where I can discuss it without going on a tangent. But it says in Matthew 23, 27 through 28, Woe to, okay, he calls, okay, remember that first uh, scripture where it says, if we, the message says, uh, we can't whitewash our sins. So it took me to the verse where Jesus calls the Sadducees and the Pharisees whitewashed tombs. He says, woe to you teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. And so when we don't confess ours, we're the same way. We, we present ourselves to be one thing, but inside God sees us. It says he knows the heart, meaning we outwardly appear righteous to others, but within we are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. And we know that sin and, and deceit and hip, hypocritical, like saying, presenting one thing, but knowing we're something else. Romans 6 and 23 says, sometimes we get to a place where we love ourselves so much that we won't surrender to the reflection, correction, and direction of God's word. Even though it's reflecting us and um, he's trying to correct us and give us direction, we, we get to a place where we're so, it's all about us. I, I'm me, so I really don't have to, to uh, repent. Yeah, you do. Repentance is for everyone. <laughs> so Romans 6 and 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So we know that he came and died for us. But until we come to that place where we need, we know we need to repent and get that thing right with God, we're living to die. And we're not really living. Those who know that they're in sin is not the way we want to live. And 2 Timothy, where uh, 3, 2 through 5 talks about when we become lovers of ourselves and we get so high and mighty where we think, oh, I can sin and it's okay. And I said before, we don't get a sin free card. It says for people shall be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to parents, ungrateful. And then I stopped because there's so much more. And I said, read it for yourself and see if you find yourself in this scripture. Because when I was reading it, some things stuck out. So I was like, okay, God is shining the flashlight on that. That's something I need to look at for me. And it says, Examine yourself, not anyone else. So read 2 Timothy 3, 2 through 5. God will shine the spotlight on what needs to be worked on in us. Not in Sister So-and-so, in Sister Lenore. <laughs> it says, um, having the appearance of godliness, but denying the power therein. That's the last verse of that 2 Timothy 3, 2 through 5. He talks about all the things we hide and how we as lovers of ourselves uh, delve in these different kinds of sin. And he says at the fifth verse, we have the appearance of godliness, but deny his power and to avoid such people. So if I'm that type of person or I, I know someone like that, I'm supposed to avoid that person, not close them out, pray for them, but not make them someone that, you know, is a crowd or hang around, you know, because we talked about guilt by association. So we do pray, but you want to avoid those people. So then, but first come, okay, so I thought about gender reveal. You know how people doing all these gender, re gender reveals? Well, God will do a sinner reveal. <laughs> He'll reveal to you, okay, now it's a sinner reveal. So you know what you're doing and you need to get it right. Ask God to give you a reflection of who you really are. Then there will be correction and godly direction for you. Stop looking further than your own reflection in the mirror and ignoring what God is trying to tell you. And you know, he took me to the man in the mirror. <laughs> but I don't know why he always takes me to a song. Um, and it, I got to 
go to where it is. So I put at the beginning, I said, I'm starting with the woman in the mirror. Uh, and, I, and I'm asking God to help. This is the this is the lyrics. I'm starting with the man in the mirror and I'm asking God to help me make a change. Okay. And the verses from Michael Jackson's song is I'm starting with the man in the mirror, asking God to, to help him change his ways. No message could have been any clearer. If they want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make that change. And when I was reading that, if, when he says no message could have been any clearer, I read right away thought about the gospel message. Yeah. I don't know what Michael Jackson's message, what message he was talking about, but with me, it spoke out the gospel message. It can't be any clearer. So, uh, yeah. So I was like, okay, the gossip, gospel, <laughs> gospel message can't be any clearer. And he gave me um, different places where the gospel is found. But then, you know, the explanation of what the gospel is. And this is what he gave me. And it came from... Um, BibleRef.com, where you, you can ask questions. So I said, give me a way to say the gospel uh, plain, because the gospel is plain. You read it and you know what it means. It's not hard for anybody to understand. The gospel is, is a gift from God. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. John 1 and 8, we have been saved by Jesus who died for our sins. 1 Corinthians 15 and 3, we must accept Accept him as our Lord and Savior, Romans 10 and 9, and repent of our sins, Matthew 4, 17. The message is of forgiveness for sin through the atoning work of Jesus Christ. And there's other ways that, but that pretty much says it. It'll tell you what he did, how he died, and how he came of a virgin, died and for us, and rose again. But the message is repent, accept him as your Lord and Savior, and strive to follow him, believe in him. So he took me to, of course, my <laughs> like it's always a song. Okay, so, so I don't get off track. Um, can, uh, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from unrighteousness. Then I look up, uh, uh, he gave me four words, confession, repentance, forgiveness, and cleansing. Confession, repentance, forgiving, and cleansing. So those four words he just kind of put into my mind. And then he gave me restoration to look it up. What is restoration? It's an act of repairing, rehabilitation, rebuilding, reconstruction, redecoration of something to a good condition. So that's what restoration is. And that's what God does for us when he, for, when he uh, forgave our sins. He gave us, it's like wiping our slate clean and starting all over again redecorating we know that re the end of that redecoration is when we uh have our new bodies <laughs> so it's like i'm looking for it don't have to be a 24 36 24 just a glorified body with the lord jesus <laughs> joel 2 and 2 and 25 yeah. says and i will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm uh, my great army which i sent among you through repentance, all which has been lost by sin will be restored. So he sent me to that verse. And then I looked up, why did he use canker worm, caterpillar, uh, all these tiny uh, insects? Because back in the day, famine was caused by bite by bite, eating away the crops, eating away. In, and every bite over time will cause a famine. So that's why he used like the insects, because back in the day, famine was caused by the locusts and all the insects that ate things away. I wanted to look that up. Jeremiah 3, 12 through 13 talks about acknowledging our guilt and rebellion and about God's uh, reframing from anger if we acknowledge our sins and repent. So Jeremiah 3, 12 through 13 talks about acknowledging our guilt and our rebellion and God removing his anger when we repent. So I'm gonna end this with uh, and this, it was very important to me to end it with Titus 2 through 12. It teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we shall live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. And that's pretty much um, sums it all up. I, I wanted to end it with Titus 2 12. That, and it teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, 
we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. And I feel that applies to me first and then whoever needs it. So that's why I chose that scripture. Amen. 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 <clears throat> and that was beautiful. And thank you for sharing. And when you were uh, sharing, I thought about um, Israel, you know, in back in Old Testament time. Mm-hmm. And they, you know, were in their times of bondage, and it was because they, you know, were doing their what they thought was right, you know, and not yeah. according to the will of God. And it wasn't until they repented that God, you know, finally, you know, answered their cry. And it just shows yeah. how our God is the same no matter what, because it's the same for us, you know, until we repent, you know, yeah. and you know, cry out to Him and make that change. You know, He's just gonna continue to just. You know, leave us out there to ourselves kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. And God's whole thing, you know, in my eyes when I was listening, you know, for me is that I know that he wants to have a per- personal relationship with me. And I like how you share, you know, we need to examine ourselves. How Second yeah. Timothy says, examine yourself. So it really yeah. is to perspective that everyone needs to take their eyes off everybody else and focus on what's going on in your own front and backyard and stay out mm-hmm. of your front and backyard. Because you know, we all got a lot of stuff going on that, you know, God knows, you know, what needs to be corrected and we do too. So yeah, I, I really like that scripture that you shared from Second yeah. Timothy as it put it in. That time. is so true. And then while you were talking, it made me remember one other verse he took me to, to where the prodigal son says, I will get up and go to my father and we should have this like me in the morning, I will get up or at night, I will rise and go to my father and say against you, oh Lord, have I sinned. Yeah. So even though he's saying this to his earthly father, we need to take that advice and say it to our father. You know, I have sinned against you. Even if we fall down, it says we, we're going to fall a lot, right. but it'll be less and less over time once we start walking in the way that God wants us to and we strive to. But every time we make a mistake, we have to acknowledge against you only have I sinned, no father. Right. And I want forgiveness. So he he said, go back to the prodigal son and read what he said. He rose from his bed and went to his father. So let us take that literally. Let us rise from whatever we'll, we're diving in or doing that we know is not pleasing to God and go to him. Right. Uh, without pride, but humbly admitting I need help in this area. Right. And it's shined the light on, you know, just um, not really like major, but it was still some things I need to look at from day to day. We're going to fall short. And I like God to remind me, right. you fall short right here. Why do you talk like that? You, that's not the way that I would talk. Why are you looking like this? Why are you doing this? Right. Just telling me uh, his spirit telling me you could have did better than that. You could have said this better. Go apologize. <laughs> it could be just go apologize. <laughs> Right. So I'm like, oh, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And Sister Rhonda, I didn't know if you had anything you want to share. You were on mute, so I didn't want to progress. <laughs> um, that was beautiful, Lenora, and, and some of that ties into to my uh, scripture. But yeah. Um, yeah, I think that you know, the longer we wait. We also, and in my scripture, it talks about a hardened heart. But the longer you wait and you don't go before him, your heart gets, you know, harder and harder and you start hearing from him less and less. Yes. Because we know that the Holy Spirit is not going to dwell in mm-hmm. an unclean temple. It's not going to even Definitely. dwell on anything, that any sin whatsoever. And so, yeah, that was, that was, be- that was a beautiful uh, progression that you did. Yeah. And I'm glad that you said it because I remember a time when I couldn't hear God. I remember that I had gotten so deep into a relationship that he didn't approve of that. And when I realized I'm not hearing him no more, mm-hmm. it was just like a, a sad and I can't even explain the, the feeling. Oh. And then when I started hearing him again, I was like, oh, my, oh my gosh, he's speaking to me again. Yeah. <laughs> didn't they say on the art, God didn't speak to Noah for a long time? Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, I've experienced that as well. And it just seems it it almost seems like you're just falling slowly into a dark hole and you yeah, don't you yeah. know you kind of want to get out. But you, you don't went so far that it's going to take work. Yeah. Things have yeah. happened that you don't want to really face, right. you know, and like mm-hmm. you said, you know, you have to repent. That means turn away from it. That doesn't mean say I'm sorry because you're sorry because you got caught. Right. And you're not really ready. 
repent and, and turn away means that I am yeah. actively, actively going to seek your face. I'm actively yeah. going to avoid the situation and the triggers that put me there in the first place. And so, Amen. yeah, that, that's really, really good. You don't Amen. want them to leave you to that reprobate mind. Right. Uh -uh. You know what? A lot of people just straight up fact, a lot of people don't come out of it. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's a slippery slope that you don't want to go. Right. And, and I'm glad you shared that. I was sharing with the sister Lenora, um, I think it was uh, Sunday or so, but it was just recently. And I was telling her, you know, how this whole study has really helped me. And I was in a, sim a situation that was a repeat situation. I felt like mm -hmm. I failed in that situation and I didn't do what, you know, God would have wanted me to do. And so when the situation presented itself, in a similar fashion, I mean, it was just like going down a parallel road. I can hear the Holy Spirit speaking just as clear as all day, telling me to just <laughs> first remember what happened when you responded the way you did before. Yeah. Be quiet and let this one go. And it was a little difficult. I'm not going to lie because, you know, in my, you know, fleshy mind and spirit, I wanted to, you know, say, no, I need to bring attention to this just for knowledge sake and awareness. Mm -hmm. But I didn't say anything, you know, and I was like, I'm just going to heed to the instruction of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and be quiet because this time could probably be worse than what it was before for not, you yeah. know, attention to God's instruction. So yeah. just super grateful that, you know, of those opportunities, like you said, when you hear from God, because there are times, yeah. when, you know, I know I have and it, and a lot of it was because I was so distracted with what I wanted to do, making my own mm -hmm. plan. We're trying to hear nobody else anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the way the enemy is, he'll make it seem like it's a different argument. But once it starts or it's a different situation, once it starts, the famil familiar Holy Spirit will say, this is the same thing. He's trying to put you back in, just trying to dress it up and make it look different. But it's the same thing. So mm -hmm. listen. I thank God for discernment. And I thank him for the yeah. much studying with you guys on wisdom. So I'm like, yes. <laughs> I was like, I can say I yes. passed the test. <laughs> take my yes, plus. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you for sharing. I feel me. like going like this. <laughs> I mean, our talking right now is just making me, you know, it makes me feel like just rocking and in agreement with God on what He's doing, you know, and the what we're talking about, how we can apply it to our lives and acknowledge that it's us sometimes. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I must yeah. definitely say that all the time. That's how I, I talk. But it, all the time <laughs> but it ain't us all the time it used to be me all the time now it's me some of the time <laughs> so before sister Rhonda goes into her part i just wanted to acknowledge that some of some people that have joined us since we first came on uh, we have okay. uh sister catherine Sutton jordan aka mother Woofle, who is on with us this mm -hmm. evening so <laughs> that grandma Woofle loves you so just wanted to acknowledge her this evening and mm -hmm. Pastor PJ Davis is on with us as well. Amen. Um, Marty Harrison and Tanya Nicole. So they yeah. uh, posted their comments. <laughs> I just want to acknowledge and welcome them. And thank you guys Amen. for sharing and taking part in tonight's yeah. session. Amen. All so, right. Sister Rhonda. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, I chose Proverbs um, 2814. And it says, happy is the man that feareth always, but he that hardened his heart shall fall into mischief. So um, I just started thinking about fear because a lot of times we really don't think about the biblical definition of fear. Mm -hmm. You know, we always talk about, oh, we have, you know, you don't use your gifts because you're afraid of people. You're afraid of this, you know, fear like that. But according to the Bible, and uh, wait, what do I have? According to the Bible and God means a sense of awe and submission of our supreme creator. And it's a profound reverence and awe, especially towards God. You know, mm -hmm. we have to give God mad respect. We have to give him mad respect because why? He deserves it. He deserves mm -hmm. it. And then sometimes, you know, I thought about the word reverence when you reverence somebody. So when you think about that, um, I thought about, you know, how some people their their reverence of God and it'll look solemn and it'll look all stoic you know they mm -hmm. come in you know we we have to be this way and we have to be that way you know and and it just it does it doesn't look happy 
It doesn't like that you, you yeah. respect this person. I mean, when you're in awe of someone, you you like seeing them coming. You you watch them. You watch every move. You listen to everything that they say. And so sometimes reverence and uh, and awe kind of like clash in our mentality, you know. But it's not that way. And so I thought about, you know, we all want to be happy, right? We all don't want to, we want to avoid trouble, you know, and God. And so that's easy for us if we trust in the Lord, because we know God's plans yeah. are for us, you know, and I had Psalms 37, three and four, and uh, it says, trust in the Lord and do good, dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the, the give you the desires of your heart. So why wouldn't you? hold that person in esteem? Why wouldn't you hold that person in awe, you know, and instead of going into our own understanding. And a lot of times we, we, when we act out in our own understanding, just like you, like you said, sister Andrea, you know, things happen. It's that same. And you, uh, sister Lenora, that same old repeat, that same yeah. old repeat. And it may take us five or six times, sometimes more than that, you know, to stop and realize, okay, that, that ain't working. That ain't working. Mm -hmm. This person right here, who I claim to, who I claim to uh, respect and and fear, you know, fear in the good way, you know, he has everything for me. But why do I keep going down that, you know, going down that mm -hmm. road? So I said, fearing God is that our whole duty? Is that our whole duty uh, that we should be doing? And I know that uh, in this book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs is a book of wisdom. We we keep establishing that. And it's really mm -hmm. good because in studying this wisdom, I go off a little bit, studying in this uh, study with you guys, it's put out my little sensors, my little mm -hmm. feelings, you know, so I'm more sensitive to mm -hmm. what uh, what Satan tries to throw at me. I'm more mm -hmm. sensitive to, to the tricks. I'm more sensitive to my selfish desires, you know, and the things that, that I desire. Um, we uh the loving reverence is the foundation of wisdom mm -hmm. if you don't if you don't acknowledge god for who he is if you're not understanding who he is how powerful how mighty he is you're a fool i'm just gonna put it out we're not supposed to say fool but that's what the word says you know that is the beginning of wisdom when you mm -hmm. can acknowledge, acknowledge who god is um ecclesiastics 12 and 13 says now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the duty of all mankind. That is our duty. Being prideful, mm -hmm. as you guys, you were mentioning being prideful. Being prideful brings on a hardened heart. God's plan is pure, true, and bent on uh, making us flourish. He wants us to mm -hmm. flourish. He wants us to be prosperous. So when we're prideful and we follow our own ideas, our wants and our desires, and we lean on our own understanding, we can develop that hardened heart. Because then when we're doing things on our own, we're not keeping our eyes focused on him. We're not yeah. leaning on his, uh, on his plan for us. The decision for us and God, those decisions that he has for us were made before we were even thought of. That's right. That plan was there for us. And so we're not, when we do that, we're, we're turning away actually from him. When we don't consult him, you know, uh, consult him and trust him in the things of, of our lives, the moves that we make in our lives, the decisions that we make and stuff, that means that you're actually turning, turning away from him. I said, um, fear of the Lord is the opposite of hardening your heart. So someone who hardens his heart will not be truly reverent or have that fear of God because he doesn't respect God as God. Mm -hmm. He respects himself more than God. And he he favors his own um, opinions, his own decisions over God. He thinks that he's, you know, big stuff. I know what I'm doing. I can handle everything, you know? So um, uh, they will fall into calamity. You will fall into calamity every time that you don't follow. As a believer, I'm, we, I'm talking about believers now, but as a believer, you will always fall into calamity 
it may take a minute, but the longer you just keep on, you know, going your way instead of the way that God has planned for you to go, you will fall into calamity uh, mm -hmm. in, in this life. If it don't happen in this life, some people, you know, you look at people and you're like, man, <laughs> you know, they keep doing that and they keep landing on their feet. They keep doing that. Don't worry, because if it don't happen in this life, it's going to happen way worse in the last life. That last life is where, you know, where you, you're you going to either be in heaven or you're going to be in hell. So, you know, don't worry about them. Let's just like you said, worry about your own self. Worry yeah. about yourself because every time we keep our eyes on other people, we uh, we tend to covet them. They keep getting away with this. They keep doing this. They're prospering this way. They're doing this mm -hmm. little slick stuff. And, you know, you start thinking we all human. They doing that little slick stuff and, you know, little slick hustlers. They always want to share what you can get and what you can do. You know, you can do this and, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, no. So we have to always follow the ways of the Lord and what he would want us to do and 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 live with integrity. Um, da, 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 what else I said? Oh, and then I had a, um, a quote from a gentleman named Walt Key, W-A-L-T-K-E. I believe it's from uh, Let, Let God Be True. And it says, when the heart is hardened, the psyche can no longer feel. And that's what we talk after so long. The psyche can no longer feel. It can't mm -hmm. respond. And this is really sad. Or opt for new directions. So you can't even, you don't even have that in you. You know, the heart and heart is fixed in unbelief and unbending defiance to God and cannot be moved to a new sphere of behavior. That means mm -hmm. you've got to scratch and work and everything. Even though God forgive you, you, you like you guys said, you have those consequences. And yeah. sometimes suffering the consequences will hold you back. You know, uh, your fear of God should cause you to mistrust yourself. You know, that 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 dependence on something that's bigger and, and, and better than you. And we know he's true. We know he's right. Uh, for self-confidence leads to sin and mischief. Mm -hmm. If you suddenly refuse God's way, you will bring on yourself his severe judgment. And I know it sounded like doomsday, but this this is really, really real. You know, we mm -hmm. as, as Christians, you know, we have to mature and be sure we're going to make mistakes. And, you know, they always say God knows my heart. Yeah, he knows your he really does know your heart. You know, if you plan, you know, if you are real, you know, and there's right. no we, we're going to die daily to stuff until he comes back. We won't be perfect. So if you fall, just jump back up. Uh, I had that, and I had this this uh, example, and I thought about it, and it, I, you know, I said, you know, water is good. We need water to survive. We need water to survive. Our bodies are made up of women are made up of fifty five percent water for women and sixty percent for men. Um, they have so many benefits to the water for your organs, you know, um, even your your skin and your cells and stuff. It helps to rebuild your cells. So that's why we have to consume so much water. And I have a great respect and reverence for water, the water in me. I have real respect for that. OK, but now me, <laughs> me in the water. I have even greater reverence for because I'm not a strong swimmer. I'm not a water baby, but I have stronger uh, reverence for that and respect. And I have that healthy fear of the ocean. You know, people say you're scared, but no, no, no. I have a, 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 a healthy fear of that ocean because I know what, it'll, what it can do for me, do to mm -hmm. me. So in that fear, I'm happy on the shore. In that fear, I'm happy in a boat. I'm happy on the cruise. I'm happy because I respect it because... The, the water is more powerful than I am. So I'm in awe when I sit on that cruise or sit on the shore and I see how beautiful it is and it's never ending. <laughs> I have respect for that because it's mm -hmm. big and it's vast. And I feel like that's how that's how God it, God is. Um, it's so vast that nobody it's life giving. Nobody will ever, ever, ever know the life that's under the under the water. You will never, you will never know that. So it's beautiful and it holds life. That fear keeps me in awe of it. You know, it's it's not a scary fear. I just respect, I can respect it because I know I can't handle it. In my fear, my reverence of the ocean 
in the water, my heart can appreciate it and my heart enjoys it, you know, and that's how we should be with God, you know, and, and my fear, I'll tell you my fear of that, because I'm not fixing to go out there and try to dog paddle or nothing, but that fear is going to save me from the calamity of drowning, you know, I will not be in any calamity with that. Mm -hmm. So fearing God, I'll go back to fearing God is not a light matter. It's life or death. It's happiness mm -hmm. or trouble. The Bible says be happy even when you're in trouble sometimes because yeah. we have that big God. We have yeah. that that hope and that that um, love for him. And we know that he is faithful and he's going to pull us up out of it. So um, read Psalms. Well, I won't read it. Read Psalms 112, 1 through 10, and also Psalms 128, 1 through 6, and see if there is prosperity in fearing God. Because when you read that, what more could you want? What more could you want? I'm going to look at Lot and the choices that he made from his own understanding. So we know that Lot was with his uncle Abram and they were in Ur and they left there and went to a land close to, well, kind of close to Sodom. Well, to me, I've always thought, why would Lot, why didn't Lot let his uncle choose first. That's what I was thinking. You know, that's what I would do. My uncle took care of me. So that kind of shows you where Lot's character is. Mm -hmm. so Lot chose what he thought was the best. And it looked good, had all the water and whatever, but what it was sitting next to, what it was sitting next to, we have to watch that. All that glitter is not gold. We have to watch that. And so he went and he he uh, picked the, the land right next to Sodom and uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Next thing we know, uh, he's watching it. He's probably watching all of that. He's wealthy now. He decides that he wants to go and live there and he wants to sit at the gate with the important people, you know, with the where they're making decisions and, and for prosecuting people and different things. Well, then he's all in the mix and during this uh, political up, up, uh, up uh, rebellion, him and his his family, they get taken captive. Well, yeah. Old Uncle Abram. Now, these are decisions that he done made on his own. He ain't consulted God, nothing. Here he comes. Uh, here comes Uncle Abram, bails him out again, um, out of captivity. Lot decides, he, he, he liking that. He's liking that uh, teeter-tottering. Mm -hmm. You know, he's living one way, but he, he he's enjoying that, that, it, being on the out, right on the edge, of all that filthy living and all that, you know, whatever. So that's feeding something in him. That's feeding that flesh. So he likes that. And um, long story short, he starts feeling some kind of way. He ain't really liking it or whatever. And uh, uh, he was feeling some kind of way about all the lawlessness. And then, you know, these these men came in. They want to they want to rank mm -hmm. out to that. But anyway, he even offered his daughters. The angels had to grab him by his hand and lead him out. He should have been already like, I'm, I don't went too deep going out, but the angels had to, mm -hmm. had to lead him out. Um, so his secular choices cost him everything because he forgot how great God is. He forgot his, his previous life and his background mm -hmm. and everything. And so I uh, have Matthew 6, 33, and it says, seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. So again, I say we have to fear the Lord even when we're not happy. Mm -hmm. The Lord may withdraw okay. temporarily from you like he drew temporarily from Job. You know, and we know that Job was a God-fearing man. Right. And when, he when he removed himself from Job, Job's happiness was reduced, of course, because look at all that he was going through. But God, mm -hmm. even that, when we're unhappy, God will return. God is going to come back with additional blessings for everybody mm -hmm. in the end, just as he did for mm -hmm. Job. God gave Job mm -hmm. twice as much. Uh-oh, she rocking. <laughs> God gave Job twice as much as what he had before. He blessed seven more sons, which was mm -hmm. awesome back in those times to have sons. And then he blessed him with three more daughters that were the most mm -hmm. beautiful daughters in the yeah. land and something to be proud of back then. So our happiness mm -hmm. and success depends on always fearing God. 
that, mm. that all, you know, that tremble when, you know, something is just so beautiful and, and, and so wonderful that you're trembling in awe. So mm. Hebrews 5 and 7 says, during the days of Jesus's life on earth, he offered up prayers mm. and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he has heard, he was heard because of his reverent submission. Mm. So as long as we continue to submit ourselves to God humbly, like you guys were saying, humbly, you know, acknowledging mm. him, and that's the, I'm so glad we, you know, now it seems like we're all in, in our prayers, you know, that's the spirit leading us to glorify God and call him by what he is. Yeah. You know, call him he says he is in his word. We believe the word, we believe him. You know, mm-hmm. and what he wants is that he desires for us to to love him like he loves us. Right. You know. Um, what did I? What else did I have? Um, yes, he he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. Yes. And was heard because of his reverent submission. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ is our perfect example. Yeah. He feared yeah. God. He feared his mm-hmm. Father always. And did everything that he could to please him. He, you know, he was about his father's business, and that's what we are called to be about our father's yeah. business. Um, Jesus is forever yes. sitting on his throne in heaven, enjoying the fullness of joy and the and yeah. pleasure forevermore. Yeah. Psalm sixteen eleven says, "You make known to me." I'm sorry. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Don't stop. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Mm. But so, uh, Psalm 1611 says that yeah. you make known to me the path of life. Yes. He knows us. He makes it known yeah. to us. There's no reason for us to fail. Yeah. He shows us the path of life. Yeah. You will fill me with joy in your presence. What a beautiful promise. Yeah. With eternal yeah. at your right hand. Mm. We can be there soon, everybody. Yeah. We're going to be there soon if we just work out our salvation. Yes, here, yes. Here, 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 here. No matter what's going on in your life, yeah. you know you can have a hard week. You can have disappointments. You can have to just try to stay happy. Yeah, <laughs> you, yeah. can, you can keep your head up. Sometimes yeah. all you can do is keep your head above water and look at him and say, what a wonderful God I serve. Mm-hmm. What a faithful God I serve. Yeah, yeah. Somebody that is going to mm-hmm. be for me no matter what. No matter what I do. Amen. Me, no matter how I feel, if I feel discouraged, you know, if I take my eyes off of him for a minute, he's yeah. gonna come for me. He's got yes, me. amen. You know, and that's that's my little talk. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was beautiful. Was yes. When you were sharing and I was just listening to everything, I the spirit uh brought to my remembrance the Beatitudes when Jesus was speaking. Because Amen. you know, he talks about bless, and then he goes into all the different avenues when a person is blessed, that word is translated into happy. And when you look yes. at Proverbs Amen. and how it's saying happy is a man that fear always, but this is giving Amen. us a contingency on what happens if we don't yeah. fear. And when you look at the Beatitudes, you see all the blessings that are to come when you are happy in those different situations Amen. and circumstances. Yeah. So, Beautiful. So we can be happy. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes we think that, okay, we're still just like that, that reverence, that stoic, that, yeah. you know, whatever. No, Ooh. you may not be talking a lot or you may not do it, but your heart is still happy. Yeah. No matter mm-hmm. what, we got kids and you know what they do. They do the same thing we did. Right. <laughs> but, you know, well, we, have, we, we have to always keep our eyes on him yeah. because that's where our peace mm-hmm. comes yeah. from. That's where right. our joy comes from. That's mm-hmm. how our, our where our preservation comes from. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. that's what that's where it comes from. Yeah. Every strength mm-hmm. that we have is from him. Yeah, so, it's not yeah, us of yeah. ourselves because we couldn't do it. Yeah. That's why we that's why I'm a recovering drug addict. That's why people yeah. drink. Yeah. That's why people are promiscuous. That yeah, yeah. but it doesn't have to be that way any longer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, man. He spoke through you. It's, and when it's like that, he started rocking me, like rocking me in his word. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's so good that your body reacts. But this is what I heard when you were speaking. I He gave me. Pro- well, when you were talking about fear, Proverbs 31, 30, where it says beauty is vain, but a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. 
uh, give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. And we know that's coming. That ain't the one I'm going to choose, but that's the one he gave me when you were talking. Then when you start talking about the water, I thought about the woman at the well, where she thought she was giving Jesus water from Jacob's well, yeah. which they reverenced yeah. Jacob. But Jesus said, the living water, which is Jesus Christ, this water I give to you, you shall never thirst again. And that's what you're saying. Even when we fall down, even when we make mistakes, the water, which is Jesus Christ, once we believe and accept him, we won't thirst for those worldly things because no. we'll have completeness in him. Mm -hmm. And so what you're saying was just bringing chills and making me just feel like, oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. And then um, when you talked about the sin, it took me to the, you know, where we see people always landing on their feet. It took me to the Israelites, how they were in that cycle of sin. They repented and then he put them, he stood them back up. But when you said they always land on their feet, I put, uh, that's because they've been, they were falling down on their knees because they were praying when they were going through yes. that, yes. the cycle of sin and the punishment, mm -hmm. then they prayed. So they, when you fall on your knees, he going to make sure you land on your feet. Good, so I was just like, good. oh my gosh, no, mm -hmm. it's the nugget yes. you gave me was just like, mm -hmm. all this and like, it's just overwhelming just the way he, he uses the scriptures we choose to teach us, mm -hmm. yeah. to reach us, you know, and just, oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Oh my God. Very beautiful and well put and just all the nuggets that we can oh use. God. I have a lot of nuggets. Well, that's God. That's God. Amazing. Yeah, it's like Amazing. You. Well, I Ooh. appreciate you both. And unfortunately, we are a little past that hour. And <laughs> I believe that just stopping where we are now, just with everything that Rhonda shared, I really think that that is just awesome because it just really yeah. sealed the conversation yeah. for tonight and everything that was spoken, you know. Amen. I believe it's going to touch many, not just us here that yeah. are here virtually and live right now, but every here that is going to hear. Yes. So, yeah. Sister Rhonda, we just thank you Ooh. for letting the Spirit yeah. use you to be transparent. Amen. And here. So, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you, too, Sister Lenora, for sharing earlier Proverbs 28 and 13. So, anyone that just joined us, or didn't get to hear that part of the discussion, please go back and listen to the recording because there were definitely nuggets in that yeah. portion of our discussion as well as far as that verse. And please read it for yourself so that God yeah. can speak to you directly because he may give yes. you a different revelation than what yeah. he has all given us here tonight. Yeah. So and yeah, it was 13 and 14 unknowingly. Yeah. So he just, yeah. 13 yeah. and 14 unknowingly. That's why you yeah. know he's like, ooh, Lord. <laughs> Yes. So yes. next week we'll be here live again on tail at 615, 615 to about 715. And we're going to be going into the next chapter, which is going to be chapter 29. And so we invite you to join us again back here uh, on YouTube and Facebook. Please share, like, and tag with others and get them connected. And we just thank you from the bottom of our hearts for being here with us, for fellowshipping tonight, for sharing in the comments. And we just pray that you are encouraged and that you trust and stand on the promises of God. Yes. So, Amen. God, thank you. we love you guys. And we know that God is going to do bigger and greater things because he is a big God. Yes, and he is. Amen. Every in my life that he can do the impossible. That is my promise mm -hmm. that I definitely stand on. So whatever man think is not possible, God can make all things possible. Yes, he can. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, Sister Lynn, uh, I was going to say Sister, Lynn, <laughs> Sister Rhonda, excuse me. <laughs> Y'all have to excuse me. Sister Rhonda, will you close us out in prayer this evening? Yes, Lord. Amen. Will. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, Father. We thank you for being the God that you say you are in your word, oh, Heavenly Father, almighty, all powerful, oh, Heavenly Father, full of grace and mercy, oh, Heavenly Father, Lord. We could not serve anyone better than you, oh, Heavenly Father, Lord. You are everything. You are the beginning and the end, oh, God. Father, you are the ancient of days, oh, God. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity that we had to share your word, Lord. Father, we thank you for trusting us, oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, to share your word, Lord. We know that your, 
your word says that iron sharpens iron lord and we just pray tonight oh heavenly father lord that everyone oh god that even listened oh god was able to their spirits were able to join in oh heavenly father on this study lord i thank you for all things i ask oh god that you watch over and bless each and every person yes, on, uh, that was on tonight their families oh god heavenly father the ones that are traveling oh god Give them travel grace and mercy, oh, Heavenly Father, Lord. I lift up all of our the women on and the men or everyone that was listening. I lift up our children tonight, oh, Heavenly yes, Father, Lord, that you would place that hedge of protection about them, oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, that you would place someone in their lives, oh, God, yes, that Lord. help them, oh, God, to see you for who you are, oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, and help us, oh, God, to continue yes. to be in prayer for them, oh, God. Father, we pray for the sick and the shut-in, oh, God. We pray for our leadership, oh, Heavenly Father, all over Bakersfield, oh, Heavenly Father. And just thank you, Lord. I thank you, oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, yes, that, yes. that you cover us, oh, God. I thank you, oh, God, that you are yes. a redeeming God and a God of a second chance, oh, God. Father, I thank yes, you and I praise yes. you for all things, oh, God, and yes, watch over yes. us and speak, Lord. Help us, oh, God, to seek your face more. Help yes. us to read your word, oh, God, if it's not but one verse a day, oh, Heavenly Father, Lord. Help us to yes. carve time oh god to study your word in jesus name i pray amen thank you amen amen, amen. Thank you, god. Beautiful, beautiful thank you <laughs> i'm ready to go to bed now <laughs> <laughs> and go talk to my father <laughs> yes well everyone we pray that you have a blessed week and if yes. you're able to join us tomorrow at Bible study at our church yes. at six o'clock to seven o'clock at Pleasant View, 700 South Haley Street. And if you can't make it out for Bible study, we pray that if you're here, you can join us on Sunday mornings, 9.30 a.m. for Sunday school, 11 o'clock a.m. for our worship service. So we welcome one and we welcome all. So yes. from us to you, God bless you and good yes. night. Thank yeah. you, Sister Lenora and Sister Rhonda. Thank Love you. God. Perfect <laughs> host. <laughs> Great God. Praise God. Mm -hmm. See you guys all next week. Amen. Bye. God bless Bye. everybody. Love y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.